Hey Lions, I'm here with Farmer John, owner of Poppins Do Pick Strawberries. Good morning, Mr. John. Good morning, Amia. Farmer John, this strawberry patch is unlike any of the ones I've ever seen before. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I'd be glad to. This is a hydroponic operation that you guys have picked these beautiful strawberries with. Now, have you ever heard of hydroponics before? No, sir. Hydroponic means that we drip feed. It gets all its nutrients from liquid fertilize. We do not grow in soil like you see a lot of the 100 acre or 200 acre farms. We have about 3,000 plants in about a 2,400 square foot area. Wow. How about that? That's so we, a lot. We grow the sweetest strawberries around. We do not use pesticides. Well, that's very interesting. So is pesticides like a chemical? Pesticides, most of them are chemicals. We try to use natural pesticide. Did you know that ladybugs are a natural pesticide? Really? That's right. And we have plenty of ladybugs out there crawling around eating the pests on the plants. So we encourage um, what we call natural growing. Very interesting. And how long have you had this business? We've been experimenting with this type of growing for three years. Wow. Is there any other types of foods that you grow here? We grow squash in the springtime and tomatoes. And usually uh, strawberries are the only crop we have from January through April. Wow. Well, that's very interesting. Is there anything else you would like to tell the lions? Well, I'd like y'all to come out here and taste some of these sweet strawberries. Amia, would you like to try one? Yes, sir, I would. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Amia at Papa's You Pick Strawberries. So lions, you better come down here. They are open on Saturday from 8 to 12. Thanks, Farmer John. This was awesome. Thanks for coming. Hey lads, I'm here at the 2011 Walkathon, where hundreds of students are walking and running to help raise money for our PE program. So tell me, Daniel, how many laps have you ran? I'm on my ship whack and I'm keep on running. Awesome. And what about you, Andre? I'm on my nut lap and I'm running strong. All right, well, you guys better get back out there. So as they go around the course, they stop to get their lap cards marked and stop at the table to get some refreshing Gatorade and water. So coach, it's a beautiful day at the Walkathon. How is it going? It's going fantastic. The kids are having a great time. All right, and what are we raising money for? We need to replace our PE equipment. Things are breaking left and right. I hope you're buying some jump ropes because I love to jump rope. And you notice those jump ropes are breaking a lot, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to say to the Philip O'Brien Lions? Actually, thank you, I would. Boys and girls and our teachers, I would just like to thank everyone for your support of our program, and we're doing a great job raising money to replace the equipment. Well, thanks, Coach. I'm Amy, I'm reporting for Lion Kingdom News at the Walkathon. Good morning, Lions. I'm here with the mayor of our city, Mr. Fields. So, what exactly does a mayor do? The mayor does a wide variety of things. Most of it has to do with running the city. We also have to do work outside of the city representing our community across Florida and throughout the state. We also do fun things like coming to talk to kids at school and sometimes even being interviewed, like here today. And why did you want to become mayor? I really believed that I could make a difference. I believed that I could connect people and, and help bring our city closer together and help us to be a, a stronger and more vibrant community as well. And I learned today that we have something in common. Yes, we do. When I was younger and in the sixth grade, I came to this school. Now back then, it was a long time ago, it was called Lime Street Elementary before it became Philip O'Brien Elementary as it is today. And what was your favorite subject? Math was probably my favorite subject. That's mine too, but you know reading is very important. You're absolutely correct. Reading is very important. And can you tell us why you think reading is important? I think reading is important because it really helps us to communicate. And for students today, it is even more important than it was when I was in school. Because there's a lot more written communication today with the use of the internet, and it has become so much more uh, vital for success both as a student and as an adult in the work world. 
And what do you think we should do to succeed in school? I think one of the major things that needs to be done to be successful in school is really the same as it is as an adult in life. One is to have a good attitude about what you're doing, to work hard and make sure you come prepared to do your best every day, and making sure that we allow those adults, particularly as students who are trying to help us, to in fact help us, because there, there is a resource and they want us to, to do our best and that's what we should be prepared to do every day. Those are some really great thoughts on being successful. Teachers around here encourage us to read a lot. What was your favorite book as a child? My favorite book was the Bible, but I also had two books that I enjoyed reading while I was a student here at Lime Street or Philip O'Brien Elementary now. I'll get that straight one day. Uh, that was Old Yeller and Where the Red Fern Grows. Those are some sad stories. Yes, they were, but they taught us a lot too. Thanks, Mr. Fields. I'm Shania reporting for Lion Kingdom News. Boys and girls, look who I found sneaking around our school. Well, hi, Lindsay. I'm Nikki Leisure, and I'm the special elf that works with Santa. And I'm here to see all the wonderful boys and girls here at Philip O'Brien Elementary. What do you do at the North Pole? Oh, Lindsay, I do a lot of things. I have to make sure all the elves are getting the presents ready because the big day's coming up. And the reindeer, they have to be ready because the big day is a long journey for them. Speaking of which, what do reindeer eat? Oh, boys and girls, they love to have apples and carrots are their favorite. Imagine that. Will all the Philip O'Brien's good this year? Oh, I am so proud of the Philip O'Brien Lions who have been good this year. And because of your positive behavior, you'll be able to board the Polar Express. Boys and girls, keep making those good choices. Do you know what I'm getting for Christmas? <gasps> oh, I couldn't tell you that. Santa will show you on the big day. Aw, oh, man. I'm Lindsay. We're here with the North Pole News. Merry Christmas. And have a happy new year. That's right, I'm in Miss Lay's first grade class where they're having a super time building their reading muscles in the AR Super Bowl. Brianna, tell us more about it. I'm on the Green Bay Packers team. And what are you going to do? Read and read so our team can win the Super Bowl. And how many points do you already have? 20 AR points. Wow, so let's kick on over to find out who else is reading for the AR teams. Go, Green Bay, go! I'm on the Steelers and, and we're going to win because I have 25 points. Point. Go Steelers, go! Oh, you caught me reading. I'm reading so I can get more AR points. I want my team to win. So I hope my team will win. Go Green Bay, go! I'm Cameron. I'm on the Steelers team. We're going to win because I've read a lot of books. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Go! Good morning, Lions. I'm here with Miss Liz. Tell me, Miss Liz, where did you get all these pumpkins? Uh, we purchased them from a pumpkin patch in New Mexico. That's very interesting. And how much do they cost? Well, what we do is we have the pumpkins delivered, and then we sell them, and then we split the money with the people at the pumpkin patch. Cool. And how long have you been selling pumpkins? Um, we have been selling pumpkins here at our church for six years. That's a long time. And what do you use the money for? Uh, the money goes to our child care center. This year we're purchasing new buggies for them. And do you have any unusual pumpkins here? We do this year. We've got quite a few green pumpkins like the one I'm holding here. We've got some big white pumpkins that they call ghost pumpkins. And we have some orange and white ones they call Cinderella pumpkins. Very unusual. Well, you heard it here, Lions. If you want to purchase a pumpkin, come to the United Methodist Temple at South Florida Avenue. I'm Amia reporting for Lion Kingdom News. Hey there, Lions. Have you been reading your Sunshine State readers? Well, I have, and I just finished reading Cicada Summer. Do you hear that annoying noise? 
It sounds like the cicadas have arrived. In case you don't know what a cicada is, cicadas are insects that spend most of their lives underground. And when they become adults, they hang out in trees and make this awful noise. However, they're not harmful and they have no mystery to them, unlike Lily in the book Cicada Summer. The mystery about Lily is she doesn't speak at all. A new girl, Tinny, comes to town and she's going to try and solve the mystery that Lily has been hiding for two years. Can Tinny really make Lily talk or will the only sound you hear be the cicadas? Find out in this book by Angie Obiti. Check it out in our library today. I'm Lexi with the Lion Kingdom News Book Talk. Here with me today is a very legendary figure, Francis Scott Key. He wrote the words to a very special song, The Star Spangled Banner. You all have heard it, I know. It's our national anthem. Now, Mr. Key, tell us what happened to inspire you to write the song? It all happened when I was in a boat near Baltimore, Maryland in September 13, 1814. The British were bombing Fort McHenry and trying to capture the city of Baltimore. I waited all night to see what would happen. I could see the bombs bursting in the air. Finally, through the smoke, I saw a wonderful sight. What was it? It was the American flag flying over Fort McHenry. The Americans won? Yes, we had won the battle. That's when I wrote the poem, which was put to the tune of a popular song and later called the Star Spangled Banner. When did it become our national anthem? It wasn't until March 3rd, 1931, when President Hoover signed a law that made it our official national anthem. That's an amazing story, Mr. Key. Thanks so much for sharing it with us. My pleasure. Now, Lions, for almost 200 years, the words of the Star Spangled Banner have brought pride to the people of America and the land of the free and the home of the brave. Hey there, Lions. As you know, this month is Black History Month. There are so many famous African Americans, but I'm especially interested in those who have been on movies and in TV. Here are a few that come to my mind. Paul Robertson, he's a singer and an actor. There's Maya Angelou, a writer, poet, and an actress. Bill Cosby, author and actor. And we all know Oprah Winfrey, actress and TV star. But my all-time favorite is the one and the only James Earl Jones. You may not recognize his face, but I'm sure you can pick out his voice. No, I am your father. That's right, Lions. James Earl Jones is the voice of Darth Vader, and his accomplishments don't stop there. He was also the voice of Mufasa from The Lion King. Listen to this. I'm only brave when I have to be. Simba, being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. I love his deep, distinct voice and the power that he puts behind it, don't you? And those are just some of the reasons I admire James Earl Jones. I'm Lexi, reporting from Lion Kingdom News. Good morning, Lions. Did you know that this week is National Fire Prevention Week? And here with me today to talk a little bit more about it is Miss Warren. So, Miss Warren, what can you tell us is going on at the fire department this week? This week is National Fire Prevention Week, and at the fire department we are celebrating this year's theme, Smoke Alarms, a sound you can live with, by reminding and encouraging families to test your smoke alarms once a month and change your batteries at least twice a year. So, I hear you guys are also having an open house this Saturday, right? Yes, we are, Lexi. This Saturday is our open house from 10 to 2 at Station 1 here in downtown Lakeland. We encourage everyone to come out, bring your friends, families, and your pets. Awesome, that sounds great. So what are some of the things that we can see at the fire department? Well, some of the things you'll be able to see at our open house this Saturday are firefighters um, rappelling down the tower. You'll also be able to see them cut up some vehicles 
to show how we rescue patients who might become entrapped. You'll be able to meet and greet our fire chief as well as Sparky the dog. That sounds great. I know I'll be there. I hope to see you lions too. This is Lexi reporting for Lion Kingdom News. Now back to you girls.